Welcome to the hot sauce. This is Angel Planels, registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 197 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help a brother out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to have a sibling episode featuring Marty Yadrick, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Kansas City, Missouri, and Kathy Yadrick Zippel, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. All right. Well, welcome back to the hot sauce. Today, we have a uh, definitely a very special episode. This is going to be the first episode where we feature siblings, sibling RDs. So we have Marty Yadrick and Kathy Yadrick. So let's go ahead and we are going to put Marty in the hot seat first. And I want Marty to go ahead and introduce himself and tell us about how he got into this wonderful profession of nutrition and dietetics. Okay, thanks, Angel. Well, you know, with my sister sitting here, I've got to acknowledge the first thing is that Kathy being in the profession made me aware that the profession was an option. I probably wouldn't have thought about dietetics if Kathy hadn't already uh, pursued it. Now, as she'll tell you later, she went a very different path than than I did, but it was really her making me aware of it. And then also just me having an interest in how something as simple and pleasurable as eating can help you stay healthy longer and avoid chronic diseases. So that's really how I got started in the, the whole profession and what interested me in it. Okay, cool. And then what, um, I guess what, so since she got you interested, what would you say were the, um, I guess, tell us where you went to school and tell us about okay. jobs along the way. What would you say? Yeah, I, I grew up in Colorado. Uh, our dad was in the Air Force. That's how we ended up there. And so I went to Colorado State University and ended up majoring in dietetics after changing my major a few times, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then I uh, got an internship in Kansas City, which is actually where our parents are from originally, where Kathy was born, um, and did a master's and internship combined program here. And then I was a clinical dietitian for several years and decided that uh, that wasn't really the area where I wanted to be. So I got an MBA, then got hired at back at the department where I did my internship as a title was administrative officer. I wasn't a food service supervisor. I was more the departmental accounting and budget and HR guy. Uh, And then in 1993, I moved to Los Angeles without a job and heard about this woman named Ellen Luros who had started this company nine years earlier called Computrition or longer ago than that. But, and that was 30 years ago and I've been with them more of a nutrition informatics area of practice since 1993. So that, that's kind of been my journey. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is something you may not find often is where people will stick with the same uh, company for, for a long time. Yeah. So. I never dreamed I would be anywhere longer than five or six years, but you know, it's been such a great run and something different every day. So it's been great. Okay. Could you um, elaborate a little bit on what exactly is uh, nutrition informatics and what you guys do at Computrition? Yeah, well, informatics in general is the use of technology and information in nutrition practice. And even though we haven't called it that for very long, it's been around since the 60s. I, I do a talk for students and affiliate meetings on nutrition informatics. And one of the things I show is that The first nutrition informatics related journal article was actually in 1962 about the use of computers in in dietary studies. So it's been around a a long time. And so regardless of the area of practice, if you're using technology in any fashion, uh, whether it's electronic health records, if you're in clinical or recording, using any kind of software to do a nutrient analysis of, of someone's diet or a facility's menu or costing of a recipe or menu, you're using informatics. And um, it's people, there are people like me who specialize in, like our, the, the company I work for, our, our software automates food nutrition department functions of facilities, mainly hospitals, some long-term care facilities, some correctional facilities, uh, but it's using every function uh, that the department would do, whether it's patient nutrition care, like taking care that they're not getting anything they're allergic to or doing recipe 
nutrient analysis and costing, as I mentioned, uh, it, it automates all that. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Well, let's go ahead and we'll switch for a second. I'm going to put Kathy in so maybe we can hear about her entry into the profession. So we're going to switch this. We're going to do this a little differently and move Kathy into the hot seat here. <laughs> All right. So cool. So tell me what exactly got you inspired to joining the profession and what your journey's been. Well, it's, it's funny because um, reflecting on um, my career and, you know, preparing for this interview really sort of took me down memory lane, thinking about things that I hadn't thought about in a long time. Um, I, you know, I, my journey, I think, really started in high school with my high school chemistry teacher. Uh, Marty and I both went to St. Mary's High School in Colorado Springs. My chemistry teacher was a nun, Sister Valerie. She was very popular. She was a really neat gal. And uh, she taught chemistry and other sciences, but I also was aware that she was a dietitian. I really didn't know, you know what that meant at the time. Um, so that was a factor that kind of played, played into you know, my, my decision. So I'll get to that in just a minute. I, you know, also, our mom didn't really like to cook and our dad had a strong interest in food and I liked to cook. So when I was in high school, I started you know, preparing the dinner meal quite a bit. Our dad really developed his cooking interests kind of later in life, you know, it was sort of the traditional family where the mom cooked, <laughs> but, but he started making later on, he started making soup. He was like famous for his soups and pie, this macadamia nut cream pie it was sort of a takeoff on a coconut cream pie. That was a specialty. He would give it away uh, to a lot of his friends. So, you know, the, the food thing was a big thing for me. And I know that, you know, just talking to students through the years, because I've been in academia, that's, that's a big influence for a lot of folks. Not everybody, but a lot of folks that go into dietetics. Um, so the sister Valerie, I'm, you know, getting ready to go off to college. She's helping me apply for scholarships and I get a, a good financial offer from Michigan State. So I'm interested in kind of, you know, trying something different for most of my peers. So I go off to Michigan State and I'm going to be a chemistry major because, you know, that's what Sister Valerie was. And I like chemistry a lot. So I enroll in chemistry classes. And after two quarters, we were on the quarter system at the time. I said, I was like, nope, <laughs> chemistry is not the thing. So I go, okay, well, Sister Valerie, she told me she was a dietitian. I know that has something to do with food and nutrition. So I march myself over to the food and nutrition department, talk to an advisor, and you know, she encouraged me to change the major and put me in a major called research in food and nutrition because I'd had so much science already. Um, well, you know, there was hardly anybody, anybody in that major, but it did allow me to d develop some good research skills, you know, that I that I use later in life. So um, I wanted to mention, you know, one of the really neat experiences I had while I was an undergraduate was between my junior and senior year, I, ha I had the opportunity to do an internship with Kraft Foods in their test kitchens in Chicago. And so, you know, I learned how to test recipes made from their products and some food photography and that sort of thing. And it was, you know, really a fun and enriching experience. So I'm coming up to graduation and I've got two job offers, basically. One is an assistantship, kind of in the same lab I'd been working as a tech in, as an undergraduate, and to go back to craft. And craft was by far the more exciting and interesting choice. But I thought, well, maybe it'd be good to go ahead and get my master's. So I stayed at Michigan State, worked in a lab on um, the effects of cooking on pesticide residues in pork. <laughs> the, there was still, there was a lot of pesticide use, persistent pesticides like DDT at the time. And so that was an important area of study that my advisors, you know, had, had funding for. But, um, you know, that the type of research I was doing didn't interest me at all. And so I decided when I finished that to take a different, you know, path. And I went, uh, went to work for Michigan State in community nutrition with the F, what was called the FNET program, which is still around, expanded food nutrition program for, um, to address food and nutrition insecurity. And that was kind of in the early days of the program. And, um, 
it was actually while working in that a program and subsequently then moving to Oklahoma State that I got that, that I got my RD um, RD credential. Um, I didn't. It was really in the early days of professional credentialing, which you know this super dates me. <laughs> but I went to work at Oklahoma State in the Extension Service again, working with um, training what were called extension home economists and nutrition and doing programming for the public and that sort of thing. And studied for the RD exam. And I, my, in, you know, thinking about an internship experience, what I did was kind of closest to um, the, the graduate option to, you know, to, to um, make one qualified to take the RD exam. I was working on a PhD at the time of working as an extension specialist at Oklahoma State and then accruing hours in the professional work I did as an extension specialist. So that was really a different path that's somewhat similar to that, that one option now for getting the RD credential. Nice. Awesome. <clears throat> well, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your uh, entry uh, into academia. What, what inspired you to go there besides your experience so far? Yeah, it, it was, I don't know. It was all just, it wasn't a, this grand plan that I had, you know, it was all just sort of pro providential or serendipitous, I think. Um, just sort of the way that my path, you know, carried me. I, I liked being at Oklahoma State and working, um, working in community nutrition in that extension specialist position. But, you know, being there in academia, even at that time, the PhD was the, you know, the terminal degree for somebody who wanted to stay in academia, even though I wasn't doing teaching in a, in a dietetics program at that time. And so, you know, like I said, I started working on the PhD um, and then uh, my doctoral research was also very kind of lab-based nutrition, you know, basic nutrition science. I, I studied the effects of zinc supplements on copper and, and iron metabolism, um, you know, and had subjects who were taking zinc supplements. And it was a, it was a controlled, you know, an RCT, um, randomized control trial for, for those who are yeah, not, you know, roll those, roll those initials off so readily. Um, but, um, I, so I, you know, when I was finishing the PhD, I knew I didn't want to do that type of research, but again, you know, there's, you, you can generalize research skills to any type of research, you know, to some degree. So I was looking at, um, uh, looking at positions. Uh, academic positions. I wanted to go to kind of a mid-sized university, not a place as big with as large a de diverse a department as a place like Michigan State or Oklahoma State. Um, and the we were so we're living in Oklahoma. We've got two young kids. We promised them a trip to Disney World <laughs> if they could survive me spending all these hours, you know, working on this dissertation at night, basically. Um, so we're driving from Oklahoma to Orlando, Florida. We stopped to visit some friends who had moved from Oklahoma uh, to, to, to Hattiesburg, Mississippi the year before. And in that process encountered the dean of what was, I don't even remember that, I think food, nutrition and hospitality was the name of the department. She recruited me here to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, where I still live 35 years later. Uh, for a position in, in her department. And I had the flexibility to, to go into community nutrition, which based on that experience with the FNIC program, and then actually while I was working on my dissertation, I worked for the health department, the WIC program in Oklahoma, and also did some consulting with the senior nutrition program. So I, I knew even though my research experience wasn't in community nutrition, that that was the direction that I wanted to go. So I ended up you know, taking a position um, at the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg, just up the road a little bit from your your home, Angel you uh, of New so. Orleans. So, <laughs> and been here ever since, as they say. 
Yeah. Well, my sister uh, went to college there and played uh, women's soccer. So, oh, great, great. So we've gone to Hattiesburg and driven through many times driving wherever else. <laughs> well, it's just stuff. right up the interstate from New Orleans, and yes. it's kind of on the way from yes. here to there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's that one, uh, usually gas stop people go before they, is uh, <laughs> that's going up. I guess that's where the way people go up to Birmingham is cutting uh, through. Uh, that's right, yeah. It's, it's on it's on the evacuation route for hurricanes yeah. too. I was say it's the evacuation route. I fifty nine, right? I fifty nine. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, appreciate that, and appreciate. Well, I, I want to say that it's interesting to see your <clears throat> your career journey and kind of where it's taken you. Because even though um, you've you've done research in some of the things you may not have found an interest in. Um, per se, it's skills that you picked up along the way that has made you who you are. And, and that's pretty cool mm -hmm. to see. So, well, thank you for your research. Uh, we probably have read one of your, probably have seen one of your papers that you've done a long time ago. <laughs> well, we, we've, uh, you know, more recently, it's been community nutrition intervention at University of Southern Mississippi. And so we, we were successful in getting some good uh, federal funding for, you know, community-based participatory research. There were lifestyle interventions that, you know, I think I think help people and we learned a lot in the process, so. Awesome, well, thank you for that. All right, so we're gonna switch Marty back into the hot seat here. Yep. And let's go ahead and we're gonna ask him. So <clears throat> tell us about um, how, well, I guess let's see for you, Marty. How long ago were you Academy President? Um, well, it was 2008, 2009. So what is that? 14, 14 years. Yeah. 14 wow. Years. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a long <laughs> time. <laughs> so um, what, I, I guess in terms of the Academy, uh, any, any thoughts or any thoughts on that and your presidency time and of course, uh, volunteering, whatever, you know, you've yeah. been a volunteer. What, what would you have to say? Well, I, yeah, I mean, the volunteer experiences I've had have really enriched my career. Like I, I, I say a lot that made the difference between the, having a job and having a career. And it all started with a dietitian that was my boss at a clinical job in Kansas City in the mid eighties, who said to me, you need to get involved. And so I found a position on the local district dietetic association PR committee. And that was 1986 or seven, I think. And, and there hasn't been a year since then i haven't been in some volunteer position so it's just it made it made it fun it was a little something a little bit different you felt like you were helping the profession you were you're giving back and i met some wonderful people um i'm generally a pretty shy introverted guy uh at the core so it really pushed me out beyond my comfort zone to meet people and do some fun things in leadership roles and i guess i just kept saying yes over the years and enjoying it. And I'm still, I'm still now I'm on, you know, what, two committees and two boards. Um, and one of these days I'll say uh, that's it, but it's it <laughs> really made a huge difference. And, and Kathy also, Kathy was the president of the Mississippi Dietetic Association several years ago too. So uh, it's been a fun part of our journey and really enriched our careers, I think, mm -hmm. both of us. Okay, cool. What, um, I, I guess of all your volunteer roles, what would you think is the, I don't want to, uh, uh, what, what's been the, what has been the best or what has been the most rewarding and what has been the most challenging? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, being Academy president was both because I mean, it, the staff of the Academy the, the current CEO, Pat Babiak, I mean, they're just a, a, amazing. And they put up a lot of, put up with a lot of negativity and all they're there for is to make our profession better. And that's all they care about. Um, and when I first was elected, Marianne Smith Edge, who was president a few years before me, she said, now you're the chief complaint department. So <laughs> you, you know, you do, you do hear from people, but that's part of being a leader. And that was one of the sort of hard things for me to learn at first is that you know, it's no reflection on you personally if people complain uh, and that you can. And I've learned this at my day job, too, that there will be people that are unhappy about things and you just you listen to their concerns and you 
uh, treat them with respect and see what you can do to make things better. Sometimes all it is is just facilitating a contact for them to talk to somebody else that helps them through a, an issue. Uh, and so I, I think that year was probably just a, an amazing, fun year for me. I'm lucky enough to work for an employer that pretty much freed me up from all my work duties. Uh, Jesse Pavlinak, who succeeded me, was supervising 25 dietitians the whole year she was academy president, which I just can't fathom that because I was given the luxury of being able to uh, keep my job and keep my salary and all that and, and devote virtually, you know, probably 80% of my time to the academy. So that that's probably was my favorite experience. But I mean, I, I can't discount other experiences being foundation chair a couple of years and helping do all the things that we do to raise money for scholarships and research grants and fellowships and things like that was fun being PAC chair and, and helping raise money for uh, the people in elected offices nationally who support our positions. That was a fun experience. Uh, right now I'm on the International Confederation of Dietetic Associations board as their secretary. That's been new for me since November uh, and meeting these great dietitian leaders from all over the world. Uh, it, it's all been a wonderful, fun experience. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. And then I guess, uh, let's go ahead and Kathy, what about, what about your volunteer experience since Marty opened up the door here? What would you, what would you been doing? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, I think Marty's the volunteer extraordinaire, <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've had my share of volunteer experiences through the years. I, I think, you know, like Marty, I first, when we first moved to Mississippi, I, I got involved with the district dietetic association and gradually then, you know, different, different roles for the, for our state association. Um, and then, you know, my volunteerism veered more into the research area because as an academic, you know, that was really a large part of what I did. I certainly taught a lot. I taught, you know, and I was actually served. I, I don't know if you'd consider it volunteer, but I was the, at one time I was the didactic program director. <laughs> I, these were paid positions and I was a coordinated program director and then I was a graduate program director. So, uh, you know, in, in a certain sense, I guess that's, you know, service to dietetics. But any, anyway, I, then I started doing more things like um, serving as a peer reviewer for academic journals, for our journal and, you know, Society for Nutrition Education and some of the other related ones. Um, and um, I, I ended up serving because I got grant funding from U.S. Department of Agriculture and National Institutes of Health serving on review panels, grants review panels. Um, I did, I, I had a three year stint actually on the research committee of the academy um, and served as president of that for one year. So, you know, again, most of my volunteer work was, was research related and, you know, except for the early days of my career. So, but I, you know, it's all, it's all part of it. And like Marty said, you know, it's, those are very enriching experiences that, you know, also in an academic setting, they add to your ability to, you know, to, to guide and mentor students and set an example for them. You know, we are, um, our program in dietetics, we always strongly encourage students, you know, to get involved with, with the academy and involved in volunteer roles and just, you know, simply with membership and uh, attend the state meetings and attend national meetings. So I think, you know, and that obviously helps develop their careers. Absolutely. Well, thank you both for, for your volunteering. I know a lot of us are, it's hard to say no. <laughs> But <laughs> well, that's that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say no, but it's but it's good, and you know, I think uh, the research. Yeah, I I don't know. Research is something that that's been interesting, but the I guess the the trials and tribulations. Some people may not be cut out for it, so you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's the thing about dietetics that. There's so many, I mean, Marty and I are perfect examples. You know, there, there's other than, you know, we both have volunteered. <laughs> there's nothing similar about our careers, but there's so many different things that you can, you can do. That's, you know, that's what I would always tell prospective students. Uh, you know, there's room for so many 
different interests and you know as undergraduates and graduate students were prepared to go in a lot of different directions i think the idea of being prepared as more of a generalist with some understanding of different aspects of dietetic practice and and in internships the opportunity to get all those varying experience i mean i've heard a lot of students say interns say um well i thought i was going to do x but i discovered in my internship experience that i really loved you know why <laughs> so right that's yeah. uh, that's a great thing about dietetics absolutely all right well I'll keep you in the hot seat for the next question. So if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change it? What would you keep the same? This is going to be a, uh, well, I guess, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll I mean, I, I honestly don't think I would change anything. Like I said, I never had this master plan. <laughs> it all just seemed to unfold. Uh, but in a, in a good way that, you know, I always found rewarding and satisfying. Um, I, you know, honestly, I I don't think I'd change a thing. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight you on that. That's awesome. All right, well, let's go ahead and we'll switch back over to Marty. So, Marty, you get the same question. So, if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? There's only one little minor thing that I thought of, and that is when I was picking my dietetics major, undergraduate major at Colorado State. I picked a concentration that was focused on clinical only. So I only had one food service management class and that was operations. I did not have production and purchasing. I did not have other management classes. And years and years later in my job at Computrition, that was a detriment to me because any clinical use of the software, I could imagine what that really was like because I did it. But any food service management, like what's issuing you know, I couldn't relate to it. Uh, I, I'm very visual. I, I, I have to like imagine what something was like. I couldn't relate to it. So learning the food service management side of our software was a struggle for me because I didn't have those real life experiences. Now, sure, I had been a busboy at a restaurant. I'd been a dishwasher <laughs> at our college dorm and done those things, but never any managerial role or like production purchasing, anything like that. So uh that the, the undergraduate concentration and my clinical, my, excuse me, my dietetic internship was clinical only. So I didn't have food service management experience there. So that's the one thing that I might go back and change is get that more, like pick a general dietetics concentration and pick a more general internship. But I, I've learned along the way, it's just been a little bit of an uphill thing for me to learn those other things that I didn't get in okay. undergrad and internship. Cool. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll stick with you. What does the future hold for you? What would you say? <laughs> well, there is the R word retirement. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe when I turn 70 that I might retire. Now that's three and a half years, a little less than that. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, I am on some boards and committees through the next fiscal year or longer with the international one that I mentioned. Uh, it's hard for me to say no, so I, I don't know. But I also think these volunteer positions, it's always good for younger people to get in there with younger ideas and technology uh, expertise that they have beyond anything that I could dream of. Uh, so I want to serve. I want to continue to serve. But I also want to step aside and let other people do things with their younger perspectives and ideas and experiences. Okay. Why? Well, I, I agree. Sometimes uh, um, it is uh, one of these that uh, the same people continue stepping up into roles and it doesn't allow an opportunity for others to develop their skills and, and flourish. So, um, but we'd like to, you know, like Linda, Linda Farce continuing to volunteer and it's good to see you volunteer. And I, I think it's, <laughs> It's one of these that is always good to see people continue around because it shows the, the power of relationship building, collaborating with others, and just serving a higher purpose. So, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Well, Kathy, what? 
<laughs> oh, I'm, so already, I'm already retired. retired. <laughs> okay, so you already said the R word. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I've actually been retired almost five years now. It hardly seems possible, but uh, so you know, uh, continued good grand grand parenting time is, is a high priority. I have three grandchildren. Uh, they're 13, 11, and and uh, almost five. So they're an interesting mix of interests and. Um, accomplishments and I, I I'm really not doing anything with nutrition and dietetics right now I I've done a little healthcare advocacy here in Mississippi um, Mississippi unfortunately is one of the states that uh, did not choose to expand Medicaid uh, but finally after you know a few years of trying they, the legislature just finally passed and the governor signed a expansion of medicaid for postpartum care up to one year it had been i think like two months before so you know writing letters and calling state legislators has been something that i've been doing on that for for some time um and i do some kind of church related volunteer work like in my old age and caregiver role, working with some other folks on starting a caregiver ministry. So I think that volunteer spirit is, you know, is still there. It's just manifested in, in different ways right now. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. All right. So the final question for you, Kathy, um, you've had a long, long and <laughs> weedy, windy career path. Any words of wisdom for the next generation of registered dietitian nutritionists, what would you say? Gosh, I, you know, kind of, kind of going back to what Marty said. I mean, I, there are so many things that are so different now about, you know, the way, the way we do business um, that I, I can't even begin to know or grasp, you know, I, they, they've left me behind. Um, you know, I, I think I sort of go back to what I was saying about what's so good about the profession. I mean, I think take advantage of every opportunity to develop skills in as many different areas as possible, even though, you know, in terms of, of, of academic coursework, I'm thinking, you know, more about the student and the intern now. You may not, you know, you may not like this or that. But you never know, you know, just how those skills and that knowledge might serve you in the future. Uh, embrace the different opportunities that dietetics has to offer, uh, because again, you you never know when that position or opportunity might come available that that would uh, cause you to kind of call on skills that you may not have used most recently, but might end up being, you know, a great opportunity for you. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. And we'll go ahead and switch it over to Marty. And so you have the final question, any words of wisdom, what would you say? Yeah. Uh, the main thing that comes to my mind is we've got to stay evidence-based in everything we do in our profession. Correlation is not causation. I, I understand that there are fads that are in the media that dietitians have to respond to, have comments on that it's easy to go with something to say, oh yeah, this eating this produces this result, um, like it's magical. And we know it's not. So uh, I think that we could do a lot of harm to our profession if we don't stay evidence-based. So I think that's the biggest recommendation I would give anybody in our profession that may not always be the most popular thing at the moment in the media to to not respond or to disagree with something that's really popular right now but it will keep us uh the respected profession that, that we are okay awesome all right well with that being said i want to thank you both for your time i uh appreciate you coming on for this first sibling episode thank you <laughs> happy to be here all right. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. It's me. Your greatest gift if you are watching this on YouTube is to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this content. If you are listening on a podcast platform, 
please share away. And of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to buy me a coffee and share a beverage my way. And if you want to purchase one for the guests that I just interviewed, send it my way and I will get it to that individual. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.